Michelle, can you tell us where you're from? Um, I was born in Korea, raised in California, lived in Hawaii, and now I'm here. So I was born and raised in a household where both very devoted Buddhist family was. My parents were both Buddhist. Um, so I was raised going to the Buddhist temple, but my mom's side came to Christ with my aunt who shared. So I grew up going to Buddhist temple and Gorong church. And honestly, as a kid, you know, the Buddhist temple had like a retreat things like that too. But every night I would be so scared when we're sleeping in the Buddhist temple where the monk had to like hold on to me till I'm like falling asleep because I was just so terrified of the night, which is so funny because I wasn't scared of the dark. When I was um, eight years old, I was going to the Buddhist temple and I've been to church and then I remember asking my grandmother, uh, what's the difference between Jesus and Buddha? And this was my dad's side grandma who was a Buddhist. So she was like, oh, they're friends. So, you know, you're young, so you're like, oh, okay, they're in the sky, kind of shaking hands together. From my belief, from there, um, God really wanted to show me that He's one true living God. Because after that, a lot of things in my life happened that was out of my control. Um, I did come to America, and by that time, my parents did divorce. But then the first household that my father, who's devoted Buddhist, entrusted me and my brother with was a third generational pastor's house. So from there, like I was going to church like it's home or it's like, a, you know, I was going there to like learn English and have fun. It was fun. And um, from there on, like I was going to church. It wasn't personal to me. It was just like religion. Fast forward to my high school year. I was very depressed. I was chasing after education, after money, after friends, after just just wrong things of the world. I had this face mask on, right? Like, oh, like I'm all good. But I came home and I felt so empty. And I was just sitting and I was like, if I'm gonna die anyways, like what's the point of like setting hard? What's the point of like living? And I just felt so empty. And I remember one day I was like, well, why am I living? So I was super depressed. For me, everything happened at school. One of my friend, um, she came back like very, just something was different about her. And then so after math class, I went up to her and I was like, what is wrong with you? And she was telling me like, Michelle, God is alive. I think because I kind of grew up in church, no one really asked me this question, but she asked me, are you Christian? And I said, um, I'm half Christian and half Buddhist. And she was like, there's no such a thing. And so she asked me, do you have five minutes after school? And I said, yeah, I mean, I have nothing to lose. And um, we went to the park and we're having a conversation. I just felt this warmth that five minute conversation turned into like three hour conversation. And I was just like crying because I was broken. Like my family's broken. Like my parents got divorced and when they got divorced, my mom left our house. So I never like met my mom since when I was eight years old till all the way to high school. And then so she invited me to Friday night service. I went to church. And similar to Hungry Jen, everyone just like on fire for the Lord. And I was like, okay, this is different. But I went because there was something. You know, maybe Jesus dying on the cross is real. I was like, maybe there is something more about his love. Like, what is this love? From there on, um, I was just devoted to church. I was keep going. And I remember after work, I was sitting on the couch and I was like, wait, is this it? Like going to church and then doing like, you know, homeless outreach and then like going to like reading the Bible, is this it? Is this it? And then that's when my leader called and she was like, Michelle, like, can you come to the retreat? Um, and I said, oh, I have work. And as soon as like I hung up, my boss called me and she's like, oh, you're off this, this day. And that was a retreat day. I was like, okay. So I called her back. I'm like, okay, I could go. And she's like, well, you're going to help me in the room. So you need to come to like the prayer meeting and we're going to fast. I wasn't fasting, I was starving because I didn't know what I was doing. I was just curious. I was like this love that people were talking about, like I want to know because everyone at the end of it wants to love, right? We want to be loved. And then I went to the retreat and as soon as I got there, I just felt, I felt <laughs> on my knees and my life went in like a film. And he was saying, I was always there with you. Um, Come on, let's give Jesus a clap offering. He is so real. Amen. He is so real. Got baptized with the Holy Spirit. Showed me a vision and I was wearing a wedding dress, but it was very dirty and I felt shame and guilt. And all of a sudden he took the wedding dress off and he put a new one on.
but it wasn't even white. I was wearing the light. And here's a crazy part: my name in Korean means light. Little did I know, because that little did I know, <laughs> little did I know. Um, and 2017, 14 years later, me and my mom met for the first time, and my mom came to Christ in 2007. She got baptized in the Holy Spirit. She didn't know anything about the Bible. She was just like, she just heard Holy Spirit saying, "Go to the seminar." So she went to seminar without knowing who Peter, Paul, nothing. She just went. And so when we met, there was a spiritual connection. And then she was always praying for me. And then she showed me a scrapbook of when I was young. And it's so crazy because in one of the the little sticky notes she saved was a prayer from my like a preschool teacher. And it said, "Let she be the light of the world." Who knew there was someone praying for me? Who knew there was a prayer invested in me? So when I was depressed and I was angry, you know, and um, I got into fight in school. I got kicked out of the school. Okay, I was chasing after education. But let me just tell you, when Christ came into my life, everything shifted. He opened the doors, but now the intention, motive was completely different. I went to UCLA. Let me tell you, if you are chasing after education, you guys, that's not the answer. I've been to the high known school of UCLA. There's kids who are depressed. There are suicidal thoughts. So it's not the answer. If you're chasing after career, it's not the answer. If you're chasing after relationship, it's not the answer. But Jesus is the answer, and His love is so real. Amen. So real. His love is so real. Amen. Amen. Never underestimate what one conversation can provoke in someone's life. Whenever you have that feeling, or whenever the Holy Spirit's telling you, "Hey, initiate that conversation," do it because it can transform someone's life forever. So, Michelle, what would be some advice that you would give to someone who was maybe in a similar situation? There's one true living God, and that's Jesus. Grace is what makes Christian like so different from any other religion. Because every other religion is a give and take. Even Buddhists, they are like, "Oh, live a good life, then you will be born into a better life." Right? Re Reincarnation. And even Muslim, like you pray five times, then your sins are washed away. But Jesus says, "I just jump into the shower. I'll wash you. You just come as you are, and I'll wash you. I'll wash you. And my grace, right? God's reckless love always changes everything. He changes everything. So if wherever you are, I just want to say." God knows you. You're not just created in this earth to live and die. You are so uniquely designed, and God will hear you wherever you are. Just surrender and just ask for His love, and He will answer.